All right, welcome back to PacWest Bigfoot. This is David, and uh, real quick, want to say thank you very much out there to uh, everybody that listens, including you. And uh, that's awesome. <laughs> Anyways, um, I saved some of these really awesome um, uh, Bigfoot encounter stories for this time of the year. I love fall. I love winter. So I've kind of put everything together here uh, over the next couple months. <clears throat> and uh, so I hope you enjoy those. Uh, also, real quick, for next month's giveaway, I got a, I got another surprise on the way that I'm not going to mention. But I do have this right now, and you guys can check this out. It's... Uh, Tales of the Cryptids, Mysterious Creatures that May or May Not Exist. And this is investigated by Hall, Spears, and Young. This is a great, great book. This is a, uh, the free giveaway for October. If you don't know how to get in and enter for the free giveaway, it's very, very simple. Go over to PacWestBigfoot.com and join the clan there. And that's all you have to do. <clears throat> also, I want to uh, just give a an awesome shout out to my good friend uh, Gunner over there at Sasquatch Coffee and Monster X Radio. Thank you guys so very much um, for just uh, listening on in. Uh, those of you at FolkloreSupply.com, um, just all of you guys out there who have uh, you know given uh, here and helped out here and everything else with Pack West Bigfoot, just want to say thank you so very much. <clears throat> so let's clear our throats <clears throat> and let's get to this week's Bigfoot encounter story. Young woman sees Bigfoot in pumpkin patch in Idaho. Mm. It was northwest of Boise, a popular little pumpkin patch my mom and dad and I would visit each year and grab a few to carve into jack-o'-lanterns. But one year, well, I watched as a Bigfoot stole some pumpkins and disappeared into the mountain beyond when I was nine to ten years old. Yes, you can remember a lot from that age on, and I remember every second of it. I remember how it looked, its mannerisms, and how it stared back at me. Here's my encounter with Bigfoot in Idaho, and, for, and a short visual. It was pretty intense. I'm deaf, not dumb. I am not dumb. I know what I saw. And that is exactly what I tried to point out and tell my parents. But even today, they still have a hard time believing me and what I tell them even now about what I saw that morning. But, although it was brief, it was a brief visual, I remember everything I saw that cool autumn morning. As I mentioned before, we were visiting a pumpkin patch not too far out of Boise, but far enough to take, some, take a decent drive time. Each year, we visited one of two patches, <clears throat> either the one on the west side or the one on the east side of Boise. They were, like I said, not that far away, but they were out in the country far enough. This year, we were heading to my favorite, the one to the west of Boise. This particular farm, I remember, was much larger and had more fun things to do like corn mazes, hay mazes, wagon rides around the farm, and of course, tons of Halloween-styled stuff and candy. It was autumn at its finest everywhere we visited. This year we wanted to beat the crowds, my mother being a paid artist, a painter actually. She wanted to get there at sunrise to take in visually and get some pictures of it all. This year she was to make her next painting something that represented that time of the year, fall. So off we went. I think it was around 6.30 a.m., and give or take a few. <clears throat> and yes, my folks are still morning people, and so am I for that matter. I never thought about the subject of Bigfoot, however, back then. I did hear about it in many of the stories. Hey, I was born and raised here. But I never thought about it much, or them, I would say now. It was a pretty scary thing to witness. But I was far enough away and near enough to people that I felt safe enough during the whole event and sighting. I also know for a fact that the owners of the farm know and knew what was out there. Something they didn't, uh, they did that day spelled the fact out for me when I thought about it later. <coughs> Pumpkins and Bigfoot. We finally arrived about a half hour later. It was barely light outside and the farm was not quite open yet. My dad pulled over near the far side of the farm where my mom and he would walk around a bit as the sun came up over the hills to the west. 
The patch was large, and I mean huge. To the south of us, just across the road, there were endless acres of pumpkins. Um, beyond that were clusters of trees, and beyond that were some mountains and forest. There is a small creek that runs almost completely around the farm, too. I say this because I watched as this thing crossed it in two steps and right up the bank to the pumpkin patch. We decided to walk off and get a little lost in the patch itself. Of course, my mother headed off to ask permission for taking some pictures about a hundred yards away at the store. That left me and my dad. Well, he was lost in his camera himself and kept on walking ahead towards a field of corn about 200 yards east. <clears throat> he did not go far, but far enough not to hear me if I was to yell. As I said, I am partially deaf. Well, mostly deaf, and yelling is not something I can do very well. I decided to start looking around for a couple of pumpkins to take home, and we would carve as a family, not to mention roasting the seeds for snacks before Halloween. I was looking around when something caught my eye. Something moved in my peripheral. Peripheral. Movement across the field and creek itself. Like anyone else who is deaf, for the most part, my other senses are pretty good. Heightened a bit, if you will. But I believe that is because I have to rely on them more than the other. That is basically almost non-existent. I lost my hearing as a baby when I became very sick and a fever affected my hearing. Everything else is fine and unaffected by it. Anyways, I noticed the movement and watched as some extremely t dark, tall, and a very fast person practically glided out of the thicket of the trees, crossed the creek basically in two steps, and up the side of a small ravine between the field and the creek in a matter of three to four seconds. Fast. <clears throat> and they seemed to almost glide as they walked, as if they were on on the ice with skates. It did not take but a second or so for my mind and heart to start racing and thinking I was seeing something that was not human at all, actually. Something in the way she moved. I watched as it finally came to an abrupt stop at the edge of the field, and right behind another patch of trees, but still visible. I noticed a chest, as in a female chest, and I noticed that this thing at that point was not human, but a giant ape-like creature bobbing back and forth, looking around. I stooped down <clears throat> pretty quick and looked off in my father's direction. I could not see him uh, too well due to the low morning fog, <clears throat> but I could make out his silhouette. Yelling would not do. I would have to just sit there until he or my mom came back. I did not want to move. This thing moved so fast I was afraid if it saw me run, it might chase me down. So I squatted down and stayed put for now, never once taking my eye off this thing after looking back at my dad. It was a female, you could tell. Even I knew the, what breasts were at that age. It, she, <clears throat> moved out from behind the trees and into the field. It was hunched over almost to the point that its long, hairy arms were nearly touching the ground like a gorilla, I suppose. But not really. I don't know. Something in between. It was crazy. This thing seems to be shaped, seemed to be shaped like something, a person or an ape. It was just scary and weird all at the same time. The strides were long, and I'm guessing right now, but she must have been at least seven to eight feet tall. The hair was more chocolate brown color. Maybe milk chocolate, I would say. And her arms seemed to be longer than humans as they passed, uh, if they passed her knees when she finally stood upright completely. I watched as she looked around some more, and even seemed to sniff the air that, fortunately at the time, was not blowing past me. Her head was huge. I could even make out some of the forehead as it protruded far out over her face. But, as for eyes, teeth, and other features, she was too far away for that. I noticed no neck, as some have stated as well in their descriptions I've, ha I've been reading recently. She started moving a bit in my direction. <clears throat> that freaked me out. I was also freaked out, I remember, and wanted to bolt. I was that scared. But I knew I needed to, or should just sit, completely still. 
I noticed she started moving pumpkins around with her large hands, and after a second or so, she picked up uh, one or two here and there and tossed them back by the trees about 25 feet behind her. Scarecrow Dad. She must have picked up and picked up and thrown, say, 45, four, four or five pumpkins over near the first one by the time I saw her suddenly stop and stand up quickly and look in my direction. I thought maybe she had finally spotted me and I was going to be in some real trouble fast. But I heard a faint cough, one that sounded familiar. It was my dad walking back towards me. <clears throat> the Bigfoot retreated pretty fast. In two steps, she was standing near the pumpkins she had picked and then gathered them all together and walked back the way she came originally. My father did say later he saw someone, a figure, someone over that way but he was not close enough to see what I saw. I started motioning him through basic sign language that I was frantic and scared. He caught the gestures and words and picked up his pace real fast until seconds later he was right next to me. I was not sobbing or anything, but he knew I and could sense I was frightened by something. I told him what I saw, and even though he told me it was probably a misidentification, I, I knew what I saw. But still, being a panic-stricken, being extremely panic-stricken, he walked me back over to the store. We met my mom about halfway there, and I told her too. I'm not sure if they believed me, but they were still very understanding and did not let me out of their sight the rest of the morning while we were there. By the time I got to the store, I was still talking, gesturing, and even one of the owners had asked, you know, what I was you know, I was doing sign language, so, of course, they were kind of slightly inquisitive about what I was saying, and my hand gesture seemed rushed, I suppose, and my mom and dad actually let the owner know exactly what I was saying. She looked at me and my parents with a really weird look, I guess you could say. And I knew right then when she looked at me that she knew. She knew exactly what I had seen. Because I think she'd seen it herself. Later on, we finished choosing some pumpkins, and my mom took some pictures after obtaining the permission. But we did not stick around for the corn maze and her other attraction. I was far too concerned that that thing would come back, and they could sense that. Looking back now, I, I know what I saw. I saw a Bigfoot, a female Bigfoot, gathering food. I have then, since then, heard of other stories from that general area about spotting Bigfoot or strange experience and sounds at least. Personally, I do not take my daughter there today, ever. We visit the other one on the far east side of the city. But that is it. That is my encounter. Thanks. June.